Okay, so you'll need this picture for number two in order to answer the warm-up question. So when you're ready, scroll to the next page and we'll go through the warm-up. Okay, hey, number one, if one third of a gallon of wax covers one ninth of a hardwood floor, how much wax is needed for the entire floor? You'll see that the first thing we did is we set up a ticket, wax to floor. One third gallon of wax, one ninth of the floor. How much wax is needed for the entire floor? The entire floor is one. So once I have my ticket set up, the rest is pretty procedural and simple. I cross multiply, one third times one is one third, one ninth times x is one ninth x. Now I have a one step equation. I need to divide each side by one ninth. So in order to get my solution to this, I actually have to do one third divided by one ninth, which I went ahead and did off to the side. So one third, kept it, changed the sign, flipped it, nine over three or three. So it would take three gallons of wax to cover the entire floor. Number two is a pretty tricky one. It says determine the total distance around the figure below. And what we have here is, is kind of like a track. And on this track, we have two straightaways, and then we have two kind of curved portions. So we need to figure out the distance around the entire thing. So if I started here, how long it would take me, how many yards it would take to go all the way around the outside. So I kind of split this up into two problems. The first part of the problem is if I were to go around those straightaways, I would cover 30 yards here and 30 yards here. So that would be a total of 60 yards. The next piece of this I kind of had to think about because I have two semicircles. And if I put those two semicircles together, it forms one full circle. And the diameter of that circle is 15. It's given to us. So the diameter is 15, which means the radius is seven and a half. And we were working on circles right before we went on this extended break. So if you forget, the diameter is always twice as large as the radius. Because we're looking for distance around a circle, around is circumference, and C equals pi D, circumference equals pi times diameter. So circumference equals pi times 15. Now, if you didn't have a calculator and couldn't use 3.14, I just kind of estimated pi to be about 3, because it is about 3. 15 times 3 is about 45. So it takes me 60 yards to go across my straightaways and 45 yards to go across the outside, the circular portion of this. So all together, with my estimate, it's 105. And if I were to use 3.14, if I had a calculator for exactly pi, it would be 107.1 yards around that figure. Okay, number three. It says a five pound bag of cherries sells for $9.45 at that same rate. What is the price per pound of cherries? So even if you aren't that good with division, if it's not your strong suit, there is a way that we can work around this. So we're going to take a look at this today to find the most reasonable answer. You do have to know some of the basics. Five can go into nine once, and then you carry on. Nine minus five is four. You bring down your next four. So right away, we know, because there's my decimal point, that the price per pound of cherries is going to be one dollar something. So that automatically eliminates answer choice B. It also eliminates answer choice D. Now we can work the next step. So how many times can five go into 44 without going over? And that's eight. Five times eight is 40. So right here, since we know that our tenths place is going to be an eight, that means answer choice A is the only reasonable answer for this. So even if you can't completely long divide and finish it all the way, if you understand the basics of the concepts, you can kind of work around some of the trickier parts for you. And number four says, what is the probability of tossing eight tails three consecutive times? That means I'm going to flip a coin and I'm looking for eight tails, which is one out of two, eight tails, which is one out of two, and eight tails, which is one out of two. When we're looking for compound events or the probability of multiple events happening, you multiply each individual probability. So one half times one half times one half is one eighth. And what that means is if you were to do this experiment, about one out of eight times, you'd be able to flip three tails in a row. 
Okay, today's lesson will be focused on combining like terms. 